How satisfied are you with your vehicles? According to the American Customer Satisfaction Index, the auto industry inches forward 1% as inventory levels return to, I'll put in air quotes, normal. In this video, I will look at the American Customer Satisfaction Index study for 2024 and see if you agree with it or not. Let's get to it. Hey, it's LSFT here today, and today we're here to look at the American Customer Satisfaction Index. In 2023, the video that I produced last year, Toyota and Lexus actually was number one on the mainstream and luxury brands. And this year, things have changed a bit. Let's get to it and look at the press release for the American Customer Satisfaction Index, and then let's look at the list and see, does that surprise you or it's actually something that you think is not right. Let's get to it and look at the press release. All right, so you can see here, Subaru, Toyota, Mercedes-Benz, Tesla in a tight race for automobile supremacy, while hybrid drivers are most satisfied customers. That's what they say. So you can see Toyota's name here, but Lexus is no not on the list. So does that mean that Lexus is not number one anymore? We'll know more later. But when we look at here, they're saying that uh, the industry has moved to 80% out of 100 on average, which is very good marks, right? And they're saying that the mass market right here says it's 79 out of 100 versus the luxury is getting 81 out of 100. So definitely the scores have increased and it's getting a little better. And they're saying that although the auto industry shows signs of recovery in the pandemic, but it's not all top down win in their air for customers. And again, I think a lot of this is related to interest rates and inflation, because if you look at it, despite automotive sales showing strong growth in 2023, many customers remain cautious about making major purchases like a new vehicle. So there's no need for a new vehicle. People aren't buying them. It's a lot of it is the higher interest rates and inflation issues causing, I think, a slowdown there. But you can see here, I think the most important thing is Subaru catches up to Toyota in the mass market segment. Subaru, well, Toyota owns 20% of it, so I'm not surprised that they could catch up because I think they're probably following very similar strategies as well. So the competition is tight for the mass market. Subaru is up 1% and Toyota is actually down 1%. I'm not going to read the details here because they have another page that actually shows the listing. We can actually compare it there. But I think that's one of the top highlights. And you can see that in the top, it says hybrid drivers are the most satisfied. And who has the most hybrids? Toyota, right? I think that's keeping them up. But then um, we can look at the luxury lead. So they're saying that there's a two-way tie. First place is Mercedes up 4%. And Tesla is unchanged at 83%. And I think a lot of people are anxious to know, yes, the last year's co-leader, which is Lexus, and Cadillac, so Cadillac did not change, and Lexus is 1% down to 82. So 83 is top, Lexus is 82. So they're really second place. So they're also saying that hybrid world is really driving the satisfaction. Uh, that's one good thing, and I think we should look at that comparison. So now let's move over to their charts and then have a little bit more understanding about the satisfaction index. Follow me on Instagram at LSFT videos. You can see updates on my experience with the NX 450H Plus, which may not be shown on any future videos. You can reach out to me via direct messaging if you have any questions on your Lexus. If you like this video, you can provide me feedback in the comments below, like this video, share it with your friends. This definitely will help with the YouTube algorithms. Press the subscribe button and bell icon and get notified when new videos show up. And lastly, if you want to support me further, you can provide me a super thanks or visit my Amazon storefront before you purchase anything from Amazon and or you can purchase products from the list on the items that I've been using with my vehicle or at home at no extra cost to you. And now let's continue with the video. All right, so now we've moved over to the American Customer Satisfaction Index, and this is where they talk about the automobile. So this was just recently updated today. And you can see here, last year it was 79, 80 this year, and it's up 
1%. The mass market, 79 and 79, so it has not changed. The luxury plates, 81 to 81, it has not changed. So the biggest change is all the other ones, the mass market and luxury brands, which was 76 last year, and it went to 81. That's up 7%, which actually makes that little nudge to 1%. So really, the mass market and the luxury nameplates really haven't changed much. It's just that they move the rankings, and that's it. Nothing really has changed. It's really all the smaller automobile brands are actually making the satisfaction better. So we look at the mass market nameplates here. All right, so we can see here, mass market nameplates, 79, 79, no change. Subaru this year from 82 has gone up to 83, and that's 1% up. Then we have Toyota, which is 84 last year, now down 1%, 8 to 83. So now they tie first place. Honda's next with from 81 to 82, that's up 1%. Mazda, 80 to 81, that's up 1%. Buick, GM is 79 to 80, that's 1% up. And then we have Kia, 77 to 80, which is 4%. We have Chevrolet from the GM at 79 to 79, no change. Ford's gone up 3%, GM, the uh, GMC, no change. Hyundai is no change. It's a funny thing you see that Hyundai has no change, but Kia is up 4%. And Kia is actually now a better uh, satisfaction rate than Hyundai. And then we have Volkswagen, who's up 4% from 75 to 78. And then we have Nissan, 76 to 77, which is 1%. And the funny thing is all the Solantis brands are on the bottom so but they've gone up so I'm not saying that they're bad but they're still far away from the top so 74 to 77 for the ram up four percent jeep is up one dodge is down one percent and chrysler has not changed so luxury nameplates again no change mercedes is up four percent up three points from 80 to 83 tesla has not changed at all Cadillac, which is part of GM, has not changed. And we have Lexus, 83 to 82, it's down 1%. So you can see Toyota and Lexus has gone down 1%. They've got down one mark. Don't know why, but they're down. Audi has not changed. BMW has gone down one mark, it's 1%. Lincoln, I don't know why they're newly added here. They're 79. And then Acura, the Honda, is down 3%, down two points. So I don't know why Acura, people aren't satisfied with Acura, but you can also see that Infinity is not, also not on this list. So if they're going to add Infinity, probably they'll be much lower than Acura. So Acura won't be the last one on the list, but unfortunately they have not measured them. All right, so then we look at um, hybrid gasoline and electric, and others did not specify which one they have. So from an aggregated standpoint, 82. So Hybrid vehicles get an 82 uh, ranking. Gasoline gets 80 and electric gets 77. So BEV owners are not as satisfied as even just pure ICE uh, vehicles or hybrid vehicles. And then others is 70. So they didn't tell us which one. That could change it. But if you look at it, it's 70, which most likely will bring down the numbers. Hopefully when they do this index next year, there won't be any others and it's, they will specify what type of vehicles they own. Then when you look at the mass market, 81 for hybrids, gasoline is 80, and electric is 73. But then when you look at the luxury, the numbers are much closer. 84 for hybrid, 81 for gasoline, and 80 for electric. So electric and gasoline is very close in the luxury market but hybrid still shines as 84. A lot of you probably watching this channel are hybrid owners. Uh, what do you think? Do you think that you're satisfied with your hybrid? Let me know in the comments below. All right, so now they break down this by category for the mass market. So if you look at it, driving performance has not changed. Vehicle safety has not changed. Dependability has not changed. Exterior look, look paint has actually gone up 1%. So people are more satisfied with the new stylings. Quality of the mobile app has not changed. Comfort has not changed. Reliability of the mobile app is actually increased. Maybe people are getting more used to it. Website satisfaction is similar. Interior, the gas mileage has increased. I think if you have a hybrid, definitely gas mileage is better. 
technology is better and also the warranty is better. So I think one thing that you look at, Toyota's gone down 1% and Lexus has gone down 1%. Could that be really be related to the reliability of the mobile app and the quality of the mobile app? Maybe, because now it's not just the car, not just the mechanics. It's also the software and all the accessories, including the mobile apps. All right, so let's continue down the luxury lane plates. So we look at the quality of the mobile app has not changed on the luxury world. Driving performance not changed. Reliability has actually gone down one point. Exterior looks same. Vehicle safety is the same. Website satisfaction is the same. Comfort and seat quiet and quietness has gone down. Dependability is the same. Technology is the same. Everything else is the same. So overall, when you look at this, what do you think? Do you think that this makes sense? I think from a Lexus standpoint, mobile app reliability definitely is a concern and the quality of that app is also a concern. I think they need to really step up that and that probably would do them much better and better satisfaction. One thing that I think a lot of people have concerns about is the 12 volt battery issue, which probably would be the reliability, the dependability. It's not really like it break down, it won't drive, but uh, you can't start the car without a 12 volt battery, right? So I think that's one thing that Lexus does need to uh, iron out. And also I would say, yes, Toyota and Lexus has essentially the same mobile app. There's no differentiation between the mainstream and the luxury in this area. Same with the Lexus interface or the infotainment screen. They really need to do a little bit more to make that difference so that people are willing to pay more for something that um, Toyota does not get and that it also gives you a better satisfaction. So let me know in the comments below, what do you think about this American Customer Satisfaction Index study? Do you agree that um, Lexus has gone down a little bit from previous year? And also, do you think what areas are they better or what areas are they not as good? Leave in the comments below and we can have a nice discussion. I hope that you found that this video was informative and until next video, drive safely. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please comment, like, share this video. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to my channel and press that bell icon to get notified when new videos are posted. And if you like to support this channel, you can provide me a super thanks. And until next time, cheers.